Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. So I've been meaning to make this video for a while. Uh, got spurred on this morning by uh, reports coming out from the Labor Department and uh, uh, then a subsequent report by uh, The Hill. Crystal Ball did an excellent piece this morning, uh, but I wanted to expand on that a bit further. Um, so the unemployment reports came out for April and where they had expected to add uh, more than a million jobs and keep in mind again this is over the month before um, so this is really pe this isn't creating new jobs this is you know people being called back to jobs these are reopening jobs that were there previously so we're not advancing anywhere we haven't advanced anywhere beyond where we were in January of 2020 and even I've pointed out many times in January of 2020 uh, you know we had already lost many you know hundreds of thousands or millions of jobs compared to 2019 you know, we were already on a downhill slide on the economy, on jobs, uh, you know, retail outlets closing right and left, small businesses failing right and left. So when you say, you know, they were claiming that there were going to be over a million jobs added, and then they only added 266,000 jobs. So they missed that mark by 75 percent, uh, you know. So, yeah, employment is not looking good. There, are, uh, now, there are a lot of employers claiming, uh, "Oh, people don't want to work," and "Oh, there are plenty of jobs." Well, okay, that means that they don't want to take that job. Maybe it's the pay. Yeah. Maybe it's other things. But we're seeing a massive transformation in our society. Yeah. We went through the shock of 2020. That was worsened by all the fear and um, infighting. But, but now that is settling down a bit. That has nothing to do with any administration. This is a natural phenomenon. You know, when, when you see a major societal change like we have experienced in the past year, you're going to see a change. Now, there are a lot more people that are working from home. Uh, and guess what? A lot of them have found that they like it, so much so that many of them are moving out to uh, suburban or rural areas. Well, this comes with its own changes, which, are, which is going to reflect on sales, the economy. Uh, people that were living in more metropolitan areas are now living further out. Well, now they have, what, a higher mortgage and so forth, and they live further away from conveniences. Well, that means that they're going to be spending less on a consistent basis for consumer goods and services. You know, they're less likely to go out to dinner when it takes you an hour to get to some place to eat. Um as opposed to, you know, five minutes, then you're going to see a decline in that when people are paying more to, you know, build, renovate, etc. their residence. Well, what you're going to see is, and is exactly what we're seeing, you're going to see more grocery sales, you know, and fewer uh, fast food. If you pay attention when you, if you go through a fast food line right now, 
compared to last year this time, yes, the lines are longer, but compared to 2019, and those lines at, fa- at the fast food places and so forth are considerably shorter. Sales have gone down. People that work from home, uh, and I've worked from home, I know this, Yay. there's a transition period, and you might order food to be delivered to you or uh, what have you for lunch, but after a while, you start looking at it more as a job, and you're more likely to prepare a meal at home so that it's ready to eat, you know, you don't risk uh, not being able to eat because it takes longer than expected for the food to be delivered. It costs less. Yes, we saw a big spike in consumer durable goods last year, TVs and so forth, but this was people preparing for things that they didn't know Uh, how stable anything was going to be, even after this uh, ended. All right, so even the mentality going forward, because of the instability of the past year, people are going to start saving more money instead of just spending it, because they cannot rely on another pandemic coming along in the next year, or some other event. People in Texas and so forth, they're probably spending money on (laughs) buying uh, emergency generators and so forth, and solar panels, wind generators. So they're going to be spending money on that. What people want is security. And the past year has shown exactly how insecure we are as a society. So we're going to see a decline uh, in the you know, fast food industry and restaurant industry. We're going to see, see people, they may spend more to go to a nicer place when they do go out to eat rather than going to you know, some fast food line five days a week. Instead, they go out once a week. They're, overall, they're still spending less. Anyway, another effect of people moving out to rural areas is where uh, people used to have two incomes. Well, maybe they only have one. They've decided they can live on only one income. One of the problems with the... Uh, unemployment rate, which I pointed out many times, is that they never include the labor participation rate. And the labor participation rate is at the lowest point that it's been since the early 70s. More and more people have dropped out of the workforce permanently. The families that have learned that they can live on less More and more adult children are are living at home and going to college or what have you, or just combining resources between the adult parents and the adult children. It just makes sense. And this is a good thing. Families are getting closer together. People are relying on each other more. And people are defining themselves in different ways. Instead of defining yourself as a fast food worker or, you know, even in more professional jobs, people have been forced in the past year where they used to have the social uh, interaction and the drama and so forth around the water cooler and all this stuff. Instead, they've been focused on doing the job. And in many cases, they have decided God, this job sucks. When you, It's just like advertising for sports. They've always got to add this CGI and fast music and crowd responses. What happened with sports in the, in the past year without the audience? You know, I, I've heard people 
sports fans say that without the audience there, it's boring. Well, that means the game was boring to begin with. You know, so now it's the same thing with people's jobs. You know, they're finding out their job actually sucks. Why am I doing this? So unless you actually enjoy the job you're doing, which, you know, that's really going to suck for the people that are working remotely and move out to rural areas and they suddenly realize that they su that their job sucks and they hate it. <laughs> well, you're kind of stuck now, pub. Uh, but people are defining themselves less by their job and more by their familial social, social relationships and uh, things like this. And hopefully this is all going to translate more into them as a member of society. You know, and you, there's no promise of that, but, um, you know, the more isolated people are, well, maybe, they're, maybe they'll reach out more because they feel that isolation. Uh, and I, I'm hoping to see more and more of that. Anyway... Um, uh, you know, when, when that people talk about, uh, oh, well, people just don't want to go back to work. Why is it any of your concern? Okay. If you own a business and it's successful, you can afford to pay your employees more. If you cannot afford to pay your employees more, well, maybe you need to look at your management of your own business better. And, you know, I understand the stresses on small businesses and competition with uh, corporations. I've talked about that many times. I'm a big supporter of small business, but small businesses need to pay a living wage just as much as the corporations do. In that case, I think the government could support small businesses by subsidizing higher wages for small business employees as opposed to the corporations. But I'm not really expecting that to happen. Are you? So one reason I mentioned the labor participation rate so much is that, uh, you know, there's people saying, oh, well, people don't want to come back to work. They want to sit at home and uh, collect unemployment. If you dropped out of the labor participation pool, you've dropped out of the workforce, you're not collecting unemployment. And that is a record number of people that have done this. Um, you know, even when we talk about percentages in sheer numbers, the number of people that have dropped out is far more. When you talk about 61% uh, of the population being in the labor participation rate, uh, you know, in 1970, compared to today, our population has grown considerably. So that same percentage equates to much greater sheer numbers. So there are more Americans right now that have dropped out of the labor participation rate and only half of Americans were in the labor participation rate, the labor force to begin with. I pointed out the population in the United States is 330 million. The labor participation rate is estimated at uh, like 156 million. So less than half of Americans were in the workforce to begin with, and now more of them have dropped out. So, you know, and sometimes it is not just about pay. Anyway, it's not about money. It's about stress. You can talk about subsidizing preschool and what have you, but uh, look how many people work at, uh, jobs with hours that are outside of the hours of preschool and uh, that still leaves them with a big problem. Maybe they, maybe they don't even have kids. 
They've decided they don't want to spend an hour each way going to and from work and tra bumper to bumper traffic. They don't want to deal with an obnoxious, abusive boss. Um, you know, a, a job that treats them like they are property. Um, you know, ob obnoxious customers. Uber is having a big problem getting their drivers to come back. Their, their drivers just don't want to come back. What? Oh, gee, they don't want to drive their own vehicle and have some um, abusive, obnoxious, uh, smelly person in the back of their own vehicle uh, for several hours a day. You know, just a chain of one after another. Fast food workers, restaurant workers, all uh, grocery stores, uh, they all deal with different things. A cashier, oh wow, they don't, somebody doesn't want to spend eight hours a day standing in one place, putting themselves at risk of low back problems and varicose veins. Oh gee, uh, you know, for minimum wage. Even at $15 an hour for the problems it can cause emotionally, physically, well, they've decided they don't want to do that anymore. Darn. Yeah. So, people are redefining themselves. And this is a good thing. We're starting to see more of ourselves in terms of our relationships to other human beings. We're becoming less materialistic, less consumer mentality, uh, you know, all about what what you own and okay so you have nice things you you keep that um, you know 40 inch uh, LCD or LED TV uh, for a few more years instead of uh, you know going out and buying the 56 inch you know 120 inch TV most of what's on TV is shit anyway. So, <laughs> you know, people are, are, are just completely redefining themselves. And that means that we're redefining ourselves as a society. So, uh, so we're going to see an increase in wages, an increase in benefits. This is all, these are all good things. Employers are going to have to step up and they're going to have to pay living wages. They're going to have to provide more benefits, better working conditions. So, you know, all of this I find to be, a, I find to be very good things. All right. Share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.